coming up. For the Americans, the most advanced fighter of the Second World War was without a doubt the P-51 Mustang. With its high speed and great range, it was a formidable fighter that made a huge difference in the war. But in the German Luftwaffe, the most advanced fighter was not powered by propeller. Instead, it was a breakthrough in technology, the first jet fighter. With even higher speeds and powerful cannons, the ME-262 was an unbelievable feat of engineering. But the question is, which one of these fighters was better? The American Mustang or the German jet? Let's find out. Enjoy. Before we get started, I'd like to give a thank you to my Patreon supporters who helped make this video possible. If you want to support my content and get access to awesome bonus videos, please consider checking out the Patreon link in the description of this video. In 1943, the Allies had a major problem on their hands concerning the war in Europe. After winning the Battle of Britain, and with the United States now entered into the war, Germany had been pushed back and the Allies began to shift to the offensive. Establishing air bases in England, the 8th Air Force began a campaign to pound German targets all over Western Europe. The goals were hitting crucial strategic points like oil reserves and factories that would cripple Hitler's ability to continue feeding his war machine. However, the issue that began to present itself was the fact that the German fighters were dealing a heavy toll to the Allied bombers during these missions. Although the American bombers were heavily armed with gunners, the skillful German Bf 109s were still able to deal heavy damage and take down substantial numbers of planes. At the start of the war, the Americans believed that tightly packed bomber formations were essentially too powerful to be attacked. And up until mid-1943, they still believed this to be true, as many of their bomber losses on the first missions of the 8th Air Force were minimal. They often averaged less than 5% of planes being shot down. However, in the fall of 1943, the 8th Air Force began to push deeper into German territory to hit more strategic targets. And on these missions, things began to change. A key raid in August of 1943 lost 60 B-17s out of a force of 376. And another October 14th attack lost 77 bombers out of a force of 291. 26% of total bombers were lost in these missions. Obviously, this was a wake-up call to the American bomber commanders as these losses were not sustainable. Fortunately, it was right at this time that a new fighter was being put into service, the North American P-51 Mustang. Although some fighter escorts had been tried using different Allied planes, none of them had the range to stay with the bombers for long into the mission. The Mustang, however, once droppable fuel tanks were added, had a much more impressive range and could stay with the bombers for a great deal longer. When we look at the Mustang, we can see the impressive factors that made it such an obvious choice for this role. Its top speed was originally 390 miles per hour, but once a Merlin engine was added, the same engine from the Spitfire, the top speed of the P-51 was raised to 445 miles per hour or 710 kilometers per hour, and the high altitude performance went up substantially as well. Once the Merlin engine and drop tanks were added, the Mustang had an outstanding range of over 1,600 miles, allowing it to escort the American bombers all the way to Germany. This was 300 miles more than the next best alternative, the P-38 Lightning. The armament on the P-51 was six 50 caliber machine guns, allowing it to deal good damage to the enemy aircraft that came into its sights. Now, on the other side of the war in Germany, let's take a look at the German Messerschmitt Me-262. This fighter would be the first operational jet fighter the world would ever see. Design work actually started before World War II began, but problems with engines, metalwork, and top-level interference kept the aircraft from operational status with the Luftwaffe until 1944. Once the Me-262 did see combat, the results were quite impressive. Like any aircraft, it did take the pilots some getting used to in order to maximize its effectiveness. Many pilots faced early issues because they were going so much faster than enemy aircraft that they often found it very difficult to aim or lead their targets. The Mustangs or other Allied fighters were going so much slower that they could bank and turn at a much sharper rate than the 262 ever could. 
Johannes Steinhoff, a Luftwaffe fighter ace, said of his first experience in the ME-262, I passed one that looked as if it was hanging motionless in the air. I am too fast, he thought. The one above me went into a steep right-hand turn. I was coming from underneath, eyes glued to the sight, puller tighter, I thought. A throbbing in the wings as my cannon pounded briefly. Missed him, way behind his tail. It was exasperating. I would never be able to shoot one down like this. They were like a sack of fleas. A prick of doubt. Is this really such a good fighter? Could one, in fact, successfully attack a group of erratically banking fighters with this ME-262? Clearly, Johannes had second thoughts initially about the jet fighter. But most pilots seem to agree that after mastering a few techniques, it was a phenomenal aircraft. The Luftwaffe pilots eventually learned how to handle the ME-262's higher speed, and it soon proved to be a formidable air superiority fighter, with pilots such as Franz Snall managing to shoot down 17 enemy aircraft with the ME-262, 10 of them being American P-51 Mustangs. Other notable ME-262 aces included George Peter Eder, with 12 enemy fighters to his credit, including 9 P-51s. Eric Rudifer, also with 12 enemy fighters to his credit. Walter Dahl with 11 to his name, including 3 LA-7s and 6 P-51s. For an armament, the ME-262 had unbelievable firepower. German engineers packed the nose with four 30mm cannons. These cannons did an extreme amount of damage to anything that ended up in the sights of the German fighter. They were not able to carry as many rounds as the machine guns on the Mustang, but the German pilots only needed a short burst to take down any enemy aircraft. The top speed of the Messerschmitt was 900 km per hour or 560 km per hour. This blew away the P-51 Mustang's top speed by over 100 miles per hour. Because of this, the ME-262 certainly had an advantage in any mid-air confrontation between the planes, as they could gain altitude much faster and quickly escape any unfavorable situation in a dogfight. However, it should be noted that the turn rate of the P-51 was much higher than that of the Messerschmitt, so dogfights were by no means a clear-cut win for the 262. The Americans could turn and maneuver much quicker than the Germans ever could, making them an extremely difficult target. In addition, the Americans also had one key advantage that was somewhat of an Achilles heel for the ME-262. And this was that because of the high speeds of the Messerschmitt, as well as the new jet engine engineering limitations, it needed an extremely long approach for landing, as well as a great deal of time to climb after takeoffs. This made the ME-262 very vulnerable to attack during these times. While German pilots were doing either of these, their throttles were so stiff that they could do very little to defend or escape attack. And because in 1944 and 1945, the air war primarily took place over German territory, this was a brutal factor for the Germans as it allowed Mustang pilots like Chuck Yeager to take down ME-262s despite being the more advanced fighter. So what then is the answer to the question of which fighter was better? I believe there are multiple answers to this. If you are speaking from a purely technical point, I do believe the ME-262 is the better fighter. It is simply more advanced. It has advantages in power, speed, and armament. However, war is rarely fought on an even playing field, and the probable victor does not always win. In the late years of the Second World War, the Germans were on the defensive, fighting over their own territory. This did not play into the advantages of the ME-262, but actually made it a less desirable option to defend airfields and strategic targets, especially at low altitude. In addition, German pilots were exceptionally in low supply in the late years of the war. Many aces had either been killed or captured by the Allies, so the ideal plane would have been one that was not difficult to master for undertrained pilots, and this was certainly not the case with the ME-262. Even the most seasoned pilots noted that it took some practice and time to learn the aircraft, and the Germans simply did not have time to give in 1944 and 45. For the Americans, however, they were in desperate need of a fighter aircraft with long range that could perform at high altitude and defend their bombers on long bombing raids. And the P-51 Mustang did exactly this. 
Because of these things, in actual war, the P-51 Mustang may have actually served its purpose far better for the Americans than the ME-262 for the Germans. So there is definitely a case to be made that the P-51 Mustang was actually better in practicality and function. Regardless of which side you take, both of these incredible planes were great feats of engineering breakthroughs that changed air combat forever in the greatest era of dogfighting the world will ever see. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to click subscribe and comment if you have any ideas for future videos. If you want to support my hard work making this content and get access to awesome bonus videos, please check out my Patreon in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.